Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. So, Tarek and are a series on the Mr. FPJ DE10 Nano project, and we're here today to talk about whether or not the Hyper Neo Geo 64 could work on Mr. FPJ, because you guys love these Would It Work videos, and I've been getting a lot of requests to talk about the Hyper Neo Geo 64 and Mr., so we're going to do that today, because interestingly enough, some of the work has already been done for a different core, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. A big thanks to today's sponsor, Mr. Add-ons. I use his hardware on all of these videos. He's been sponsoring all these Thursday videos. Link to his site below. But honestly, I've loved the Hyper Neo Geo 64 for forever. I have a complete set of games and hardware, including the I.O. boards, as well as the Samurai Showdown 64 prototype, which is one of a kind in the world. I'm actually working on dumping that with some people right now. But this is really fun and special hardware that shares some very big similarities to some other hardware on the market. But if you take a look at this board, it is an absolute beast. Pun very much intended to get to that in just a moment. It is huge, but it is JAMA based for the most part with some exceptions. But this is the type of hardware you're never going to see out there in the world. MAME does emulate it, but it isn't perfect, but it's still impressive. And there's a reason why I always balance the Hyper Neo Geo 64 cartridge in a Nintendo 64 cart slot when I talk about unported playlist games. And that is because the Hyper Neo Geo 64 games share basically the exact same CPU as a console I've been talking a lot about on the Mr. FPGA front, the Nintendo 64. This uses, in essence, the exact same CPU as the Nintendo 64. 64, just clocked at about 7 megahertz higher than you would get on a stock Nintendo 64 the way Nintendo shipped it out. And I have done a lot of different reverse engineering projects with the Hyper Neo Geo 64 and I have worked with an engineer as well who's a gaming fan who basically charted out the exact flow on how all of the different chips on the system work in conjunction with themselves because this board is an absolute mess of silicon but in some instances the chips are duplicated and I did check around a little bit and it doesn't have to have both chips laid up in logic if it doesn't need it. But this is the NEC CPU which is basically the same CPU as in Nintendo 64. And while the Hyper Neo Geo 60 games may not be anywhere near the same type of games as Nintendo would ever publish if you can't tell already, they are some of my favorite games of all time. Beast Buster's Second Nightmare is by far the crown jewel of my arcade collection. It took me a long time to find it, I now have it running in my house, and it'll be something that never leaves. But all of those zombies guts exploding are being run on the same CPU as Paper Mario here on the Nintendo 64 running around in a cute colorful environment. Sure the games are completely different, but as far as the actual CPU and how it would be coded, they share that chip in conjunction. And like I said, you will see here it's running at 100 megahertz, and don't worry about that 64 4 megabytes of program memory. I'll explain what that means in a bit. It has the RAM allotment for it, but we do know that the CPU and overall clock speed can be improved on a stock Nintendo 64 and Mr. FPJ because Robert or FPJ Zoom Spots released the Turbo Nintendo 64 core with a 1.32 modifier to the overall clock speeds. That's why we've been doing the demos of videos showing Nintendo 64 games running at higher frame rates than they ever did before. So we do know that for the most part, Mr. FPJ should be able to cover the difference in the clock speeds on the Hyper Neo Geo 64. And that is a maximum clock speed we really don't know if any game would have ever touched all the way up to 100 megahertz. And you'll see here in the graphics, it has a very similar graphical style. The hardware is not the same as far as the graphics are concerned, but you do have perspective correct textures and polygons here as well. Now if we actually take a look at the system in and of itself, and this is from an old video that I borrowed assets from, it does have a lot of different chips on it dealing with 2D transform, different sprite engine, background layers, and 2D renders, as well as an FPGA that's going to handle communication between two boards if you were doing network play across two different arcade cabinets. If we take a look at the bottom of this system, this is where basically all of the 3D hardware is going to reside. Triangle calculations, different 3D rendering engines, the audio as well as IO CPU, things such as that. Now it's a lot of silicon to try to fit into the Mr. FPGA, but at least we know the CPU side of things can work. And I have gotten this entire diagram made up of how all the chips talk to each other in conjunction with path tracing and an engineer so we know exactly how all the different chips talk all the RAM works, how things are loaded up onto the silicon, and how a Hyper Neo Geo 64 basically functions as a hardware platform. It is complicated, but it's not the highest test hardware ever, and that is because SNK wasn't really great at developing hardware in the 3D realm. Try as they might, this was definitely inferior to most 3D hardware on the market at the time. 
but the entire 2D, 3D processing branch as well as the sound processing branch have been traced out and things have been analyzed to the point where we at least know how this hardware works and talks to itself. Now granted this would probably require some deleting of chips or some sort of other reverse engineering, but I would be willing to offer a free motherboard to any FPGA engineer that works on Mr. with a proven track record to do something like this, because we know it can work. And as far as all those big megabyte RAM things you've been seeing on the screen, that is talking about the ROM chips on the cartridge itself. It acts as an extension of RAM, but it would fit within the 128 megabyte RAM sticks that we can use on Mr. FPJ, so the games will definitely fit no issues. Now on the custom V53 NEC chip for audio and IO CPU, that is a derivative of the NEC V33, which isn't on Mr. yet, but IREM used it on some of their arcade motherboards and games that are lesser than something like this. I know people are working on adding these chips to Mr. FPJ for different arcade boards, so another chip that would be used, at least in a variant on the Hyper Neo Geo 64, is getting some progress made on the Mr. FPGA front. Now when it says I.O., they're talking about the I.O. boards here. And there are different type of I.O. boards for Hyper Neo Geo. There's the fighting board, the driving board, and the shooting board. And they are all different with different connectors and different ROMs on the bottom that program that board in real time to be able to handle the I.O. The good thing is I know exactly how all of them work. I have all of them in my collection and I have reverse engineered all of the non-JAMA IO boards to be able to take controls from devices that they were never meant to use. So I can do a lot of this in the background and I have all of this hardware. If somebody needs to take a look at it, it totally could be taken care of. And just kind of bouncing around to a very old video when I modified Beast Busters to run on home hardware, it really isn't that hard, at least as far as understanding it's concerned. And again, like I said, that 96 megabytes of vertex memory and all of that character memory is just talking about the maximums that you could put on a ROM cartridge that could then talk to the main system data bus, which is going to be about 122 megabytes per second based on calculations. And you'll see here those four I.O. boards, those are what you're going to need to incorporate in there. The Korean one is just a different ROM with the same hardware as the fighting board. Now the rarest I.O. board is definitely going to be the driving I.O. It is extremely difficult to find solo and also extremely difficult to find on a motherboard because these motherboards just don't go up to sale that often. The good thing is I have one sitting right next to me that I can do high resolution scans of and if no other one could be located I would be willing to sacrifice that to delitting and examination if it was necessary. Area. I really just want everyone to be able to play Hyper Neo Geo 64 wherever they can, including potentially Mr. FPGA. But I keep coming back to the example of the Nintendo 64 core to show you that a CPU that's running 7 MHz slower at stock and faster on the Turbo Core is possible on Mr. FPGA. And because the Nintendo 64 system bus and RAM is larger and faster than the Hyper Neo Geo 64, we know we're okay there as well. The big heavy lift would be reverse engineering the custom 2D and 3D chips on board a Hyper Neo Geo 64 motherboard. It might require delitting them and getting into some scanning, and I'm not saying that it's going to be 100% possible for the Hyper Neo Geo 64 to work on Mr. I'm saying that a large bit of it has already been done in different cores, so it is possible that everything else would fit within the logic requirements of the chips on board a Hyper Neo Geo 64. And wouldn't that be absolutely amazing? This thing has one of my favorite arcade libraries of all time. Sure, it absolutely failed as an arcade board. It could not compete with what Sega and Namco were doing in arcades as far as hardware was concerned at that time. But these games have charm, and they're an absolute ton of fun, and I really want more people to be able to play them. And while MAME Haze has definitely been updating the drivers for MAME on the Hyper Neo Geo 64 side, I'd still love to see an FPGA implementation of SNK's final hardware platform before they just started becoming a developer for other people's hardware. It's amazing we have MAME, and you guys can check these games out to see if it's something you'd be interested in FPGA. But for me, the real hardware is amazing, and I'd love to see it happen on Mr. FPGA. So to answer the question, is the Hyper Neo Geo 64 possible on Mr.? Well, at least on the CPU, RAM, and system bus side, we know it is because we already have the CPU incorporated in the Nintendo 64 core. Sure, there's probably tiny variances in that chip, but not so much it would preclude it. Now on the 2D and 3D rendering side and those custom chips, that's a big question mark. We'd have to do some more research, but you guys wanted to know the basis of this, so I figured I'd give you an answer. If you want to see a video on another platform that may or may not work, leave me a comment down below, but we are done and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.